all stargazing in Quebec with a backyard astronomer. The man on the earth is a very small part of the universe. That's an old silo that used to operate here on the farm. I have some plans for it. Someday I want to put a glass dome on top so I can sit up there and gaze at the stars. Now, that may sound like an elaborate plan, but it's really quite modest compared to Réal Monceau's. His home may be in Quebec, but his heart is in the heavens. For more than 30 years, Réal Monceau has gone to work every day at a Drummondville printing plant. He watches over giant presses as they churn out booklets and business forms. I love this uh, kind of job because when we start the press, you have 10 or 20 minutes to wait. And I have the time to, uh, to think. And most of the time, what he thinks about is completely out of this world. Real lives on this quiet street in Drummondville's South End. His house is the only one in the neighborhood with a homemade sundial in the front yard. You see, Real is an amateur astronomer. And late at night, when most people are curled up in front of their television sets, Real sets off on a little star trek of his own. Don't let the stars get in your eyes, don't let the moon break your heart. The cylinder with the eerie glow is his backyard observatory. He built it more than 20 years ago out of bits and pieces he scavenged all over the place. The observatory is coming from an old uh, gasoline tank in fiberglass. <laughs> the fiberglass dome? Yes, and the chain around is uh, for moving all the observatories coming from a bicycle bicycle chain. Even Real's telescope is a miracle of recycling, and it's a miracle of perseverance. Working nights and weekends, it took him a thousand hours to build it. This telescope is a really homemade telescope, made with uh, many kind of uh, scrap or junk uh, piece and it's not expensive because all the piece coming from anywhere that I can have some piece. One of Real's favorite astronomical pastimes is photography. But it's not easy taking a good sharp picture through a telescope. You have to be able to track an object for many minutes at a time. But Real's makeshift observatory is amazingly precise. And over the years, he's taken a lot of award-winning celestial snapshots. Real's a very good backyard astronomer, but it's as a basement astronomer that he really shines. This is a stargazer sanctuary filled with telescopes and rare astronomy books. Here, Real indulges in a hobby that may well be unique in the world. He researches and builds working replicas of old-time astronomical instruments. I love the, uh, the look of this instrument when I saw some instrument in book, but the impossibility to buy such instrument. Too expensive. It's too expensive and also uh, the, uh, it's, not, uh, it's not really... Uh, easy to find it. Real's philosophy? If you can't afford it or you can't find it, well, then you make it yourself. He spends hundreds of hours in his workshop crafting various parts of his instruments from scrap metal. Many months later, the result may be something like this, an instrument called a lunarium. This instrument represents the hut in the center, the sun here and the moon. It's easy to understand all the movement of sun and moon in the, in the celestial uh, atmosphere. Now, this is the one that fascinates me. This amulary sphere is an instrument who represent all the solar system with the earth in the center and the planets who turn around. It's a very old system. Wow, it's just beautiful. <laughs> It's 
not really an object made with a, a big machine shop. It's really a craftsmanship instrument. The light passing throughout all this uh, ring of brass uh, represents something really old and something really nice. Rael's instruments have been displayed at the National Museum of Science and Technology. Universities and private collectors have tried to buy them, but they're not for sale. And several major publications have acknowledged his work. Not bad for an amateur. They called you Le Copernic de Drummondville, the Copernicus of Drummondville. How did that feel when they, when they called you? Oh, the feeling was great. And I was a little bit afraid because uh, I'm thinking that Copernic uh, <laughs> understand better the astronomy that I can. But uh... despite all the attention, Rael Monceau manages to keep his feet planted firmly on the ground, looking through a telescope as a way of keeping everything in perspective. Each time you saw a galaxy, you you go to uh, another world, and. Uh, it seemed that the, the man on the earth is a very small part of the universe. Probably be the darndest show that you'll ever see. We hope you'll join us next week when we're on the road again. Bye for now.